I am Dr. Acula, your host. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. Twenty years ago, I was banned from my homeland, parted from my wife and son, never to see them again, because I suggested to use the atom elements for producing super beings, beings of unthinkable strength and size. I was classed as a madman, a charlatan, outlawed in the world of science, which previously honored me as a genius. A, B, N. It's headphones, Neil! Headphones Neil here, back with a very special follow-up review in the form of what's, I guess, called or generally known as the Ed Wood trilogy of films. So after watching the documentary about Ed Wood Jr., I decided to give Bride of the Monster a watch and Night of the Ghouls a watch, as far as the first time goes, and then re-watching Plan 9 from Outer Space, as the three films are supposed to be a tr the trilogy of films in a shared universe of movies. So um, upon watching them, I do have thoughts. So I'm going to start it off with the order of the film's release date being um, Bride of the Monster first, then Plan 9 from Outer Space, and then rounding it out with Night of the Ghouls. Not to be confused with Night of the Ghoul singular and the Ghouls, which are both unrelated films. Or as far as I can tell, unrelated. I didn't see if they're remakes or anything like that. But in watching the films, I thought that um, watching the other two films, notably uh, Bride of the Monster and Night of the Ghouls, it made Plan 9 from Outer Space that much better of a film because it provides more context of the events from the film. And to make that film that much better, if you watch them more in the following order, it actually makes the films better. So Plan 9 from Outer Space should be watched first, followed up with Bride of the Monster, and then rounded out with Night of the Ghouls. Just because in general that makes the story flow that much better, it sets up all the different characters, and makes the story that a little bit more sensical. So um, granted they came out in different years, but it's one of those things where it feels like it was a trilogy of films that under a modern context would have been kind of a, um, a single film and then if it was successful you would have uh, another film that goes back in time and then um, another film that's a sequel. So the best comparison to kind of bring the trilogy of films up a notch but definitely not make um, the this other trilogy down a notch is the Dark Knight trilogy which I think the third film, if memory serves, is supposed to take place before the second film or something like that. The first film obviously is the original material because I think Batman Begins, of course, is the origin story. But the second and third films are, like, I think, intertwined or interchangeable, something along those lines. Um, so the Ed Wood trilogy of films kind of did that before it was popular or well known as a thing to do. And I don't know, and I don't think the Ed Wood movie actually addressed that very well. But it's also one of those things that because he had um, trouble with financing and otherwise general issues with getting the films made, as possible, it's one of those things where um, I want to say Night of the Ghouls was released later than expected, but in general, it does follow the uh, or it follows the approximate rule that it is the third in the series of films, just because um, we have Tor Johnson showing up in all three films, and it generally or they reference the events that happen in Bride of the Monster, and but if you start the trilogy of films with Bride of the Monster, you're not you don't quite get to see the setup for Tor Johnson. So by watching Plan 9 from Outer Space first, you get to see that conversion of Tor Johnson from a police lieutenant or captain, I forget which, into this super strong ghoul. But the only so the only caveat there is that in Plan 9, it does look like he's turned into a skeleton, whereas in Bride of the Monster and 
um, um, Night of the Ghouls, he's a full-on person under the control of some sort of mind control. So, um, barring that, or it's one of those things where I guess they either figure out how to undo the damage or he wasn't actually turned into a skeleton in Plan 9, then it kind of all falls together that he's roaming the... Or it's one of those things where he's roaming the graveyard and then um, Bella Lugosi as the um, vampire. Or it's one of those things where I guess the scientist or somehow because um, Bella Lugosi as an old man and a vampire is somehow able to undo what he did. Or because of various testing, he it kind of, it's kind of ignoring basically what happened in the... Um, events of Plan 9 that he didn't turn into a skeleton so it's one of those things where you either have to ignore that jump in logic or you have to like Ed Wood said is that you have to get over I don't know I forget how he phrased it in the movie or as how Johnny Depp phrased it in the movie but you basically have to have a vivid imagination and kind of go over that um, jump in logic of what happened in Plan 9, and for some reason only Bella Lugosi and Tor Johnson were able to survive, whereas Vampira or that old man's wife in Plan 9 from Outer Space was unable to be converted, or um, Tor or um, Bella Lugosi um, tried to bring her back like he did on himself and was unsuccessful, but for some reason he was able to bring Tor Johnson back. Um, so it's one of those so i guess the only thing i could think of is maybe um the ray gun only worked or worked better on men or because they were older or you have to be a certain age to be turned back that um that's why it worked or something like that which was never really introduced but it can be chalked up to maybe like the ed wood cinematic universe to make it work but to that end, so granted the movies are very schlocky and not very good films, but when I was watching the films, I was actually generally entertained by Bride of the Monster and Plan 9 from Outer Space. I, in general, enjoyed them and wouldn't mind watching them th again. The only issue I had with um, Bride of the Monster was the fight scene at the end with um, Bella, or between Bella Lugosi and the octopus, you can obviously tell like you saw, or like you see in the Ed Wood documentary, is that um, it was obviously staged, you could tell he was in a small pond, he was not underwater, so you have to use your imagination quite a bit, and it's a stretch that the and I mean, you could obviously tell that the octopus is just sitting still, and Bella Lugosi is fighting with uh, a prop, so because of the low budget of the film and the lack of you know cgi or some other way to make it look like a person is fighting with an octopus it generally works but you can obviously tell that it's very poorly done so if they were to remake bride of the monster today they could obviously make that work and for me they should remake the films in the order of plan nine from outer space first fix the whole idea between the day and night um, but otherwise keep it all in general the same and improve of course the visual effects like the flying saucers and the door and the weird metallic twanging and stuff like that so um, in general that for me would be fine and as you can tell I'm generally not bringing up Bride of the Monster or sorry um, Night of the Ghouls because for me it was the less lesser of the three films so you have a little bit of Griswold in the introduction and the ending and for mo the most part the police scenes were fine because they fit in with the first two films or the other two films but the whole idea that you have a phony scientist named Dr. Acula was quite silly. You have a lady dressed up to pretend she's a ghost and all of that so that was kind of weird. Um, and then you have Tor Johnson showing up as being someone stuck in wherever that haunted house was or whatever, which for me was fine, but then, I don't know, it just felt like um, they could have introduced, for example, the son of Dracula, you could have um, introduced the wife that, or bring the wife as va or vamp Vampira as a wife back, and she's living with Tor Johnson and controlling him. And, use, and the two of them are haunting the house and set something like that up 
instead of having a guy named Dr. Acula as a play on Dracula. Um, so the story felt like it was um, Ed Wood high on life or not really spending as much time on the script as the other two films. So for me, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the first two films. So while it fits in with a trilogy of some of the characters and the events with Tor Johnson, as the as the thread through the films along with the two side police officers for me it just felt like they didn't take it as far as they could have or i mean potentially in real life they couldn't get vampira or she didn't want to star in the film or something like that but for me it would have been better if um they had set that up somehow with uh even with dr acula having pretending to have um um known vampira and kind of maybe even like be her son or um like have started that practice of being a medium for the into the other nether world um i don't know just to me it could have been better or better set up to um have that continu continuity so there's a reason to be using uh, or to have those characters in the film which for me that's really all it would have taken for the film to be better it's just that there's not enough they had these other continuing threads but that's about it they didn't really do much else and I mean even the police officer who said that he's always gets a bum rap of having to deal with these aliens and ghouls and vampires or I don't know if he said vampires but he brings that up so there's that con continuing thread but that's about it so that's fine for the police side but nothing on the ghouls and vampires and alien side so I really would have taken a quick you know 10 second scene to fix that for me so as far as grading the films so like I said they're obvious slock um so they're not meant to be good films, but if I was to give the overall trilogy of films a grade, I'd probably give it about a C plus to a B minus. Um, the black and white was fine, um, but in general, I just thought it, they were fun times. They were watching the trilogy of films makes for Plan Nine to be a better film. Bride of the Monster, I thought was a good film, especially with Bella Lugosi's speech about not going back to his homeland and not having a home and staying apart from his family was particularly good. Um, Chriswell as the introduction to Plan 9 was okay. It was still over the top, but I liked the continuing thread with him in um, Night of the Ghouls. But I, And then, of course, the silliness of the alien acting kind of... Actually, particularly childish or more childish than the humans when he was telling the police officers and the pilot and the uh, colonel about the solar benite was kind of silly but like i said watching bride of the monster made plan nine better and um as far as night so like i said so those kind of watching the trilogy of films makes the three films better um but as far as watching them on their own i'd probably say bride of the monster was the better of the three or the best of the three films Followed by Plan 9 from Outer Space and then Night of the Ghouls at, um, in third. So I'd probably say um, Bride of the Monster was a solid B, Plan 9 was a C, and Night of the Ghouls was a D. Um, but they are ripe for a remake, so I would definitely um, say that set them up. Um, I mean, Night of the Monster feels, or sorry, Night of the Ghouls feels like a lot of inspiration was drawn from it in. Um, Night of the Living Dead, the original one from Bay way back in the day, like with the house, the ominousness, the location, and, and the acting style, and that sort of stuff. So I thought that was a particular note. Um, and that's really the bulk of it. Um, the main funny thing I guess I want to say to round it out is Tor Johnson in the third film looked like he was the one of the characters from Eye of the Beholder for Twilight Zone but beyond that as far as watchability I would say definitely remake the films now with modern graphics and CGI update the story to fix some of the coriness and things like that um and I would say maybe make you know have a horror director make it I don't necessarily want to have like an over-the-top film made by like Michael Bay or someone like that but like whoever directs the um, Saw films, 
um, I guess have them directed just to have a little bit more of the scariness and ghoulishness um, or something like that. I mean, even potentially Christopher Nolan, if you wanted to make um, horror films, I guess he could do it just because of the because these films kind of relate as far as their timeline as far as like the Dark Knight trilogy goes or someone like that to handle the three films but in general they are ripe for a remake and I wouldn't mind seeing um, all three films be remade now with better graphics in color um, a little bit of CGI for um, some of the special effects and generally just modernize all three films so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments concerns or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and as a special bonus for this show if you are a patron of the show at patreon.com slash patel n01 you get a special about two to three minute um, intro to this episode so on the public feed, if you heard the approximately 30 second, 30 to 60 second intro, the, the supporters of the show on Patreon get the full uncut, better edited version of the intro. So if you support the show, like I said, on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, you get that special extended edition of the intro, which I thought were the best parts of the of all three films. And as you can tell, the Dr. Acula scene from Night of the Ghouls was from because that was the least of the three films, that was probably, that's the reason why you have the shortest clip there. And then um, the speech by Bella Lugosi in um, Bride of the Monster was the best part of that film and the best acted. And I kind of wanted a lot more of that. And I wish that he was in more, uh, I mean, or I guess I wish he hadn't passed away about halfway through Plan 9 and we could have gotten more speech out of him there. And I'm sure he would have, having him in Night of the Ghouls would have made that for that to be a much better film than it was. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So of course, like I said, feedback and comments and thoughts, your thoughts on the films and stuff like that at Patel in Zero One. Or as a supporter, you get the extended edition of this episode as well as commenting on this post at patreon.com slash Patel in Zero One. But thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time.